Hi, welcome to the video today. This one's called Vitamita Vegemin, or how to draw I Love Lucy with Procreate. Before we get into anything uh, related to the commentary on the drawing, let me just mention that it's taken me a little while to publish this. I was kind of stalling because of my voice, so I'm, I'm getting over a little bit of a cold. Again, just wanted to apologize for that ahead of time, but I really wanted to get this video out this week, so I decided to kind of march forward with it, despite the fact that I'm still just kind of getting over the last little remnants of that cold. Um, so if you use some sniffles or anything, again, apologies ahead of time. Now, on the talking about Lucy here. The caricature itself, I, I thought maybe just needed a little bit of commentary, mostly because it's a little bit different than what I usually do. Um, you may have noticed I colored it in just briefly to get a look at the, how the hair would look and decided ultimately to go with the black and white look that's pretty uh, common from, from the I Love Lucy TV show. When I was growing up, I saw a lot of the black and white version of it, but at some point or another it became popular to colorize a lot of black and white stuff, and Lucy... I, I might say kind of fell victim to this, uh, that that artificial coloring that made her hair this bright, almost neon orange, uh, was something that kind of sat in my head for a little bit when I thought about doing this caricature, but ultimately decided I like the black and white version a little bit better. It's, it's a little bit more reminiscent of this, this the style that I'm kind of going with in this particular piece. As far as Lucy herself is concerned, uh, let's speak to that caricature a little bit. Um, when it comes down to it, when you're trying to get the resemblance for Lucy, there's a couple things I think that just stand out immediately. The red hair is obvious amongst that, but if you're not going to be focusing on color, you got to look at some other things. I happen to notice that when Lucy uh, puts on her lipstick, or maybe her makeup artist does it, she, the lips got painted on very, very thick, so I made sure to spend a lot of time focusing on the mouth. Lucy also had a very expressive mouth uh, in her acting, and so when I was deciding on doing this, 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 this picture of Lucy, one of the first choices I had to make was how I wanted to draw her. She has some very iconic expressions that she puts on her face, and this one from the Vitamina Vegemin uh, uh, show, or episode, uh, is it, certainly a great example of that, but I also had to decide between this and one where she's crying. That's also a very obvious kind of pose or emotion that she expresses in the TV show. So um, making that decision to, to kind of pick out a, a very iconic look or, or expression on her face, well, I, I thought was something important. I, I might do the one where she's crying a, a, as a separate piece later on. It's still something I've kind of worked out some sketches on, and I still think I, I like the way it looks. Um, but I decided to go with this one because it is very iconic of a, a very specific, uh, again, expression, but also a very specific episode as well. So let's talk about that a little bit. If you're not familiar with it, Vitamina Vegemin was an episode where Lucy had some sort of an opportunity to become sort of a spokesperson for this, this product that I, I guess might be loosely described as something of a snake oil, a, a fake product that's meant to cure all your ails. Um, my understanding here from my memory, I, I didn't go back and watch this episode, but I just remember seeing it a few times in my childhood. If I remember, this is most, basically a product that's mostly alcohol. And she's filming a commercial for this product as the spokeswoman, so she constantly has to take spoonfuls of this as they do take after take after take. And what she doesn't realize is that not only does this stuff taste god-awful, hence the look on her face, but because it's mostly alcohol, after every take, she's getting a little bit more and more drunk and slurring her words a little bit more and basically just kind of falling apart as the filming of this commercial kind of takes on over time. And hence hilarity ensues, blah, blah, blah. Go watch the episode. It's a classic, and it's definitely worth taking a look at. Now, back to the caricature here a little bit. Um, again, the mouth is very iconic of Lucy, but also the eyes. I'm not a huge fan of what I tend to refer to as the Disney eyes, the, these very large, oversized eyes that seem to kind of dominate female characters in Disney cartoons. I, I uh, don't particularly care for them. I, I don't like drawing eyes that way. But in this particular case, Lucy, again, has those just oversized, overly made-up eyes uh, that kind of complemented the overly made-up mouth uh, that maybe was just important to do when you were filming in black and white back then. I don't really know for a fact. But regardless, it, it had to take place here in order to get the resemblance, along with those very thin, very painted-in eyebrows of hers as well. So I think these three things, along with the high cheekbones, really kind of help sell who she is in terms of this caricature. Uh, eyes were exaggerated, lips were exaggerated, and when I say that I meant 
they're larger than they are in real life. And as a result, some balance need to be achieved. So her nose got a little bit smaller, her chin and jawline get a little bit smaller. And again, hopefully that balance kind of comes through. As far as uh, some of the background piece uh, is concerned, um, I took some reference from a picture that I found uh, that was something of a still life from the episode that we're speaking to here. So there was something I found online, a picture of her kind of with that spoon up to her mouth. She's got that, that, that pained look on her face with the poster for the Vitamina Vegemin behind her and a stack of those bottles off to the side. Just kind of a loose idea as to how to do the composition. I, I really uh, didn't like the way the background kind of turned out on this. Um, I wanted the focal point to be really kind of on her face. So I didn't want any of the words behind her kind of pulling focus away. I struggled with this a little bit and ultimately some of the decisions I made were to try to lighten up the background a little bit. Maybe, uh, uh, see desaturation wasn't really much of an option because this is all black and white. So what it really kind of came down to was just trying to fade it a little bit and even blur it a little bit. And hopefully, uh, and you see, kind of see that I've done that now, hopefully I kind of achieved that ability to get the focus more on her than on the background. Uh, you're not going to see this right away, but one of the other things I did um, that I, I, I didn't know was going to work, it was more of an experiment that it just kind of ended up turning out well, uh, was I added some color to this. Now, now you may have seen some colors kind of flash in here and there, but the real color effect that I put on this is going to be something of a filter that I'm going to apply at the end. So you're not going to see it right now, but it will kind of come into place a little bit later. And what ended up happening here is I just had this memory of my childhood of watching old I Love Lucy reruns. And again, these are the old black and white ones. But despite the fact that they were black and white, I always kind of felt like there was a hint of pink somewhere in there. It's just a memory that struck really, really hard for me when I was thinking back to those old I Love Lucy uh, uh, episodes. I, I did go back and kind of take a look at a cold, uh, couple of YouTube videos uh, that kind of showed the uh, opening credits for I Love Lucy. And sure enough, again, I, I felt like I saw that kind of pink tinge to everything again. So what I did was I applied a red filter, a red layer and then lowered the opacity on the whole thing to give us something of this very, very light pink tinge. And you'll see kind of going right now. And that's it. Now, if you ask me, this sells the black and white feel. I feel like everything has more of a three dimensionality to it. There's more of a balance between background and foreground. And ultimately the whole thing just kind of pulls together. I'm going to turn it off uh, on and off a couple of times just to kind of show you that effect again, but I really feel like the pink, that subtle pink to it, really kind of pulls this together and makes it feel more like the TV show that I remember watching as I was younger. Now that's all about, uh, about all I have to say on this particular video. Let me just take a moment for the shameless plug. Please take a moment to subscribe, to share, and more importantly, leave some comments if you have any questions. Thanks for stopping by to take a look at this. I'll have some more content published soon. Take care, and thanks for watching.